morning. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's continuing education. So thankful to be here because um, I, I, we were already talking about the, the, the darn gone time change, you know, into daylight savings time, and it's like, oh, do we have to? <laughs> I don't know if you're like me, but body says my, my internal clock is just completely thrown off. It's like, I wish they'd do away with it. There was a really good reason for it in the past, but really, we really don't need it anymore. So I hope that that legislation I know here in Washington state, they are really working on trying to get that passed that we just stay put. We'll see what happens in the coming year. Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you about a problem that seems to exist every year in our school age children. And also this time of year, it's something that is um, a little bit annoying with our horses or cattle or um, our animal friends, and that is lice. What is lice? And then how can you battle that problem in a natural way? Because it, you know, a lot of times what will happen if you've got kids or grandkids in school and they come home with this little piece of paper that says, check your child for lice because they have found it on someone else, you know? Or we get into that um, spring weather, so we're getting in from fall or from winter to spring, and then we have so much moisture in the air, and we have mud and all this, so we have a lot of our animal friends that end up getting lice as well. And it has nothing to do with poor hygiene. It has nothing to do with uncleanliness, okay? So make sure that you're like going, oh my gosh, what are they, what are, What's their home situation like? Because that has nothing to do with whether or not you have lice. <laughs> and they are pesky little insects that like to feed on your blood and they burrow in on your scalp and then they lay eggs on your hair. And it's the same way with your animals as well. But there is a difference of the lice. So there are different types of lice when it comes to like poultry lice or your animals, like horses or cattle, um, and then the, the head lice that us humans get. So there is a little bit of a difference of those lice. In fact, <clears throat> uh, your animals, your big animals, like your horses and your cattle, have two different types of lice. One is a blood sucking, and one is not. One is on feeds off the dander, which I know most of us think of all lice that feed off the blood, but horses are, and cattle are a little bit different. Um, and so they're different in color. So for a horse or cattle um, or any, any bigger um, animals and that and generally, then you're going to have two different colors of lice and your Brown is your lice that are feeding off of the um, dander, and then your other lice are uh, more of a yellowish color. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, let me back up a little bit. So this is my continuing education. My name's Diana Hinkle. If you've never listened to mine before, I have a bunch of them on YouTube and you guys can listen at any time. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I hope that you will. The other is that if you like these continuing educations, you can get them the link for the live and replay directly to your phone by texting the word at the at sign heavens oil h-e-a-v-e-n-o-i-l-s so have or excuse me there's an s in the middle heavens oil o-i-l there's no s at the end of oils so at heavens oil 
and you will get the live and replay links. Now, I'm always trying to help people understand more about it using essential oils. I choose doTERRA essential oils for one reason, and that is the quality and the purity of their products. The integrity of the company gives us what we need, and we know that it's safe. We know that we are not only getting a great product, but we are getting a product that is helping change lives around the globe as well. And I think that's a super important to be able to not only help myself in my health and wellness, but I can also provide more for someone else and not have to be present in their country somewhere. And doTERRA has been around for 10 years now and they are the largest essential oil company in the world. And they did that in less than five years. And that there's a reason for that. And we are an educational model when it comes to network marketing. And I know a lot of people go, oh my gosh, it's that network marketing thing. But let me ask you this. Everybody networks with people. Whether it is talking to your girlfriends, talking to the person down the street, talking to the person at the store, oh, I like this brand better than that brand. We network all the time. What's your best doctor? I have, I just moved into the area. Who do you take your kids to? What doctor do you see? I mean, there's a lot of things that we do for network marketing. And this is not a pyramid scheme. And the reason I'm going to say that is because that kind of came up in conversation this weekend. And I'm like, no, this isn't a pyramid scheme. First of all, they're illegal, right? But let me ask you this. Do you work for somebody? You probably do. And if you do, who's at the very top? Aren't you putting in the hours and aren't you putting in the work to create income, not only for yourself, because you're getting paid, whether hourly or salary, right? You're getting paid to do work so that somebody at the very top earns money, right? So isn't that a pyramid? <laughs> yeah. So don't think of network marketing as being a pyramid because everything, if you're making money for someone else, that's a pyramid. So with, with network marketing and MLN, I'm making money for myself. I'm not making money for someone else. I am, but I'm also making money for myself and I make as much as I want for myself and I get to keep it. <laughs> so just saying, all right. So with doTERRA, I love the product because we have cert certified pure therapeutic grade or CPPG, which means that the integrity of the company and the quality of the products have to be met with a standard every single time a batch comes through. And it's third party, third party tested. doTERRA doesn't test it themselves until after they've done all those things. So we use them aromatically, we use them topically, and we can adjust them. Now, when it comes to doTERRA's essential oils, read the label. The label has a supplement fact and it will be like this. It'll show you that there is a supplement fact on there, and it will actually say you can, for internal use, dilute one drop in four fluid ounce of liquid, okay? That's how you know it's meant to be taken internally, and it meets the GRAS standard of the FDA, which is G-R-A-S, generally regarded as safe, okay? One drop goes a long way, so don't think you have to add a whole lot more, because like peppermint, we love the analogy of peppermint because everybody loves peppermint, right? So peppermint, well, most people, <laughs> I should back that up, right? One drop of peppermint essential oil is potent enough to equate to, equate to 28 cups of tea. Yes, 28 cups of tea. That's crazy, right? If I want to use it for my flavoring in things, like if I want to make peppermint brownies, it's the dip of a toothpick. And yeah, it's only the dip of a toothpick for me because that's enough. <laughs> but if you really like peppermint and you really want a strong sense of peppermint, use one drop. But one drop goes a long way. 
unless you're making a recipe, then you probably want to use more than one drop. Okay, so let's get back to lice and those pesky little critters that crawl around in our on our head and I'm like it just gives me the creepies especially when I see it on my animals because it caused on an animal it causes hair loss same thing with us it causes um, an itchy scalp and it also causes weight loss especially in your animal friends that is something that you don't want right and it causes inflamed scalp because typically for head lice, it is they're sucking on the blood, right? And also it increases it's the saliva of the lice that create the allergic response. And that's where you get the itchiness and that's where you get the um, inflammation going on in the scalp. And they're nocturnal, meaning that they pretty much are a bit more active at night. So if you have, if you or a child or someone is um, riddled with or has had lice, they're not gonna get the sleep because they're gonna feel that itchiness all the time, you know, because they're crawling around. So if you've ever had a fly on you, you know, which most of us don't like that, you know, if it's on our skin somewhere, even on a, or an animal, you know, they know that that fly is on there. So imagine having, all these little teeny tiny critters crawling around in your head. <laughs> Gives me the GBs. <laughs> so the lifespan of a life is about 28 days. And every nine to 10 days, they are laying eggs. So your adults lay eggs. But when they are in egg state, they're called a nit. N-I-T-S, nits are the eggs. And then the more we scratch our scalp, the more irritated our scalp is. And if we have any kind of dirt or grime under our fingernails, that actually irritates the scalp even more. And if you get, you can get to the point where you create so much inflammation that it will affect the nodes, the lymph nodes, and you'll have swollen lymph nodes. And that's so, Typically, I mean, yes, if you get to that point, you're going to need an antibiotic. Um, go to, I hope that you will go to the doctor at that point and get the antibiotics, but we do have options for that naturally if that's where you want to go. So that's what this is all about is to learn what there is naturally that you can make those choices. We're not here to treat, cure, or diagnose anything. What we're here is to help you understand what your alternatives are. And so people that have very long hair, like I have really long hair, they may not be just on the scalp. They actually can be on the skin, on your neck, because they attach to the hair. Typically, they're going to be... Um, more to the scalp but they can be on the longer parts of the hair so like if i have a horse that's riddled with lice it affects their entire body because their whole body has hair on it it doesn't just stay where the mane and the tail are typically it's going to be in the mane uh, but they become so infested that it will literally eat them to death um, it takes a, it's a long, long process, but if you've ever seen a horse or even a cow that, um, is riddled with lice, it's not a pretty sight and it really does affect their weight gain. And it's just, it's incredible because you got to think about it. If you're, if you have thousands of lice all over your entire body and they're sucking the blood out, well, what's that going to do? <laughs> going to cause a lot of issues, right? So what do we do on a natural part of using essential oils? So naturally, antibiotic, or our own natural antibiotic is oregano. Oregano is great as an antibiotic if you get to that point where you need an antibiotic. But typically, <clears throat> normally, we do not have to get to that extent, right? 
that's only if things have been um, completely un unchecked and we have not resolved that issue. Now, another thing is that when you have infection of lice, it can create a low-grade fever. And especially when you, if it gets to the lymph nodes, um, so, and plus we get irritable as well because it's lack of sleep, right? Because they're nocturnal again. Um, how you would get them or you share them by, um, even if you just like at school, you know, most of the kids are hanging their coats next to each other, especially the smaller grades. But of course, when you get into the um, higher grades, they usually have a locker of some sort. But hats, coats, games that they're playing with, um, they can infect one another. So you want to make sure that you're washed. If you find that you have a child that's coming home that's infected or you're infected with lice, make sure that you're cleaning everything, meaning that you have to wash everything. You have to uh, make sure that the bedding, coats, the hats, pillowcases, pillows, everything that comes in contact with your head needs to be clean. With, when it comes to our equine, like our animal friends, then what we're doing is we're cleaning everything. We're cleaning the blankets, we're cleaning um, the saddle, we're cleaning everything that is associated with that animal. But if there's one that is infected, you gotta take care of everybody in the house. Don't assume that there's only one person with the problem or one animal with the problem. You gotta treat all of them <laughs> because otherwise, um, you, it's going to go unseen. Now, there are many over-the-counter items that you can get that will help you in battling the situation. There are some natural remedies out there as well that you can purchase, but they're still going to have some chemical base to them. So you really want to look if this is about a lifestyle change. So what I want to teach you is, again, is the choices that you have. And because if we don't, I can go commercially for my animals. I can go commercial. We can go commercially for the head lice. But this is about lifestyle change. And if it's, if that's truly what you want to do, then this is what we're going to do. And this is what we're going to look for, okay? The biggest, the number one essential oils that you can use are lavender and melaleuca, or I should say melaleuca first, because melaleuca is an antifungal, it's antibacterial, in fact, it's the highest antibacterial that you can get. And the other name to it is tea tree. So if you find shampoos and say they have tea tree oil in them, that's your melaleuca, okay? Now, a lot of times you have, when you look at a product that has an essential oil in it already, it's a synthetic or a chemical-based essential oil that's been placed in that product because that's the fastest, quickest, cheapest way to extract essential oils. Essential oils should either be cold pressed when it comes to your citrus or it should be um, steam distilled, okay? So meaning that the temperature has to be just right in order to have a great product. So that's another thing you wanna keep in mind. And when you're going to a store somewhere, please keep in mind, Trust the source of where you're getting your essential oils. Not every essential oil is considered is equal. And doTERRA developed a, a process because when you are looking at an essential oil and testing it for contamination or fillers, as a lot of your companies will do, because that makes the oil go farther, it can be very difficult to even identify scientifically, okay? So they came up with a new and innovative way 
to test essential oils. And 95% of the essential oils that they've tested that are out there on the open market are contaminated or they have fillers in them. So just because an essential oil bottle says 100% pure does not necessarily mean that that is pure. And if it says don't put place on your skin, you really want to ask yourself a question of why. Why would I not want to put this on my skin? Well, there are different reasonings for that. And doTERRA has ones that do say don't use the oil neat, meaning all by itself. So like cinnamon, oregano, clove, some of those very potent, even peppermint, okay, are highly potent essential oils. And so you need to know whether or not your skin is sensitive to it. Always test a little spot somewhere that you're not going to be up in arms about, meaning that it won't be too hot for you. Always, when you're using essential oils with children, you want to dilute them as much as possible, meaning that you're not diluting the, what the essential oil is doing. What you're gonna do is add or mix it with a carrier oil, we love fractionated coconut oil, or you can use olive oil, vegetable oil, grapeseed oil, almond oil. Um, there's lots of different oils out there that you can choose. Fractionated coconut oil is a liquid, and there's no fragrance to it, and it has molecules small enough that it will evaporate. I shouldn't say evaporate. It will disappear and soak into the skin very quickly. And that's what we want, okay? Now, if you want, like, treating head lice, you may consider the olive oil or other oils that are higher and more greasy. And the reason I say that is because we want it to stay right there. We don't want it to necessarily soak in so much, okay? Most of your recipes are going to call for olive oil or maybe an almond oil. So you decide what you want because a lot, some people, a lot of people have allergies to uh, nuts. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing is vinegar, white vinegar, <clears throat> is another product that you can consider for battling lice, head lice. And you want a plain white. You can use your apple cider vinegar, but apple cider vinegar um, you don't want the mother in it, okay? You want it differently because you want at least 5% acidic, um, acidity. And the reason that's what has been shown to actually help with that. Now, you can add your essential oils like lavender and melaleuca to it. Um, you can make a mixture and you can do a spray bottle or you can do a spray bottle like this, okay? This is what I use, right? And no, this is not for head lice because right now I don't have anybody with lice. <laughs> uh, this is my cleaner for my, my everything in my house. <laughs> and this is a four ounce bottle. Okay, this is a pretty big bottle. And you can get bigger bottles, you can get smaller bottles, and you can pretty much Google search it and get them everywhere. <clears throat> Depending on how many you buy and where you go, it depends on the price. And I use glass because I use essential oils a lot and essential oils will actually pull petrochemicals out of plastic if you don't use a good grade plastic. So you want to do at least a two or three grade plastic, not just your like your water bottle type plastic so that they won't pull the petrochemicals out of there, meaning the petroleum base that's made, that makes that plastic, essential oils can actually pull that out of the plastic. Okay, so make sure you're using a heavy grade plastic. So with the vinegar, <clears throat> uh, you decide on how big a bottle you're going to use. Do you have just one person to treat or are you using it on several? Um, Melaleuca is, like I said, your number one. And the first one recipe that you could do is use olive oil, about two ounces, that's probably about um, a quarter cup, 
and you do 15 to 20 drops of um, essential oils. So what I would do is take either, I would take the Melaleuca and the lavender and put, <clears throat> I'd do half the Melaleuca and half the lavender. So maybe seven or eight drops of Melaleuca and the same on the um, lavender. And you want to apply that to the scalp. You can use a cotton ball or um, if you've got a glove, you could do that too. But let it so get a shower cap if you want and place it on the, the hair overnight so that you don't have to get everything else saturated with an oil. And you want to, like I said, you want to leave that overnight. If you're using vinegar, obviously you wouldn't do that overnight. You can do that for about, you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple hours. <coughs> Another recipe is um, using, um, put it in a shampoo. So if you have a shampoo that you like, you can put Melaleuca and lavender in your shampoo. The same thing. So put like a dime size um, shampoo in your hand and then add anywhere from five drops of each in your shampoo. And then you can apply it to, and then you can wash the hair that way. You will have to purchase a comb because the, the eggs that are left are attached to the hair. And so you're not gonna be able to get them out unless you have a fine comb that will take them out. Otherwise, that's, that's the number one problem. It's easy to get rid of the adults because they're just running around. But your nets or the eggs are attached to the hair. So you, unless, you're, unless you've got really good eyes and you've got really good fingers and a lot of patience and you want to go one by one, go for it. But I guarantee you'll love the comb. So go purchase the comb. Now, the other thing, there's a lot of other essential oils that you can consider using. There's melaleuca, obviously, lavender, but rosemary, there's neem oil, N-E-E-M, clove is another good one that you can use. There's eucalyptus, um, cinnamon, thyme, peppermint is in a lot of recipes. Lime is another one, it's a citrus that you could use. And you, all of these, if you're gonna use, put them in like a big, um, or like a 16 ounce spray bottle, um, you're gonna use 10 drops of Melaleuca and 10 drops of lavender. Okay, now, so Tara, I realize this after you know doing all my research, I'm always the one that looks for something that makes it simple, a little bit easier for us. And I was like thinking about this, going, oh my gosh, we have something that's really perfect for this. And it's called Red to Tip. <laughs> it's got everything in it that I've just talked about. It has, and like it comes in a box like this, so this is easier for me to read. But it's got lavender, peppermint, it's got cedar wood, it's got margarine, it has the um, melaleuca in here, it has um, rosemary, it has sunflower seed oil, which is another um, oil that you could use, a carrier oil. And it has, I think there's one, oh, it has, um, it has uh, kernel oil as well, kernel seed oil. And I thought there was one more, but either way, when you look at this, you're like, oh my gosh, this is everything in a nutshell. And you don't have to worry about it. So it's already done for you. It's in this little pump. And so this little pump, it's really easy. So you would just put some in your hand like this. Go like this and put it in your scalp. Oh, it actually smells really good. <laughs> uh, and so when you're doing this, you know what? This is a prevention as well. 
So if you've got kids and you're, you're getting into that time of the year when lice are a little bit more prevalent, start putting the root tip tip on them. It smells good. You can put it in with the shampoo if you'd like, but it's, it's an awesome, but it's like it will deter lice. So part of this is all about prevention, right? Be proactive. So why not do something like rip to tip? And I don't have to worry about it. Now, this is already has a lot of carrier oil in it, mixed with it. So because of that, that's a small bottle, but it goes a long way. Okay, one squirt does a lot of good. If you really wanted to use it on your animal friends, because now down around the barn, I don't use glass. I use either, um, you know, grade two plastic bottle, or I use, no, or I use um, a um, metal or like a, um, what do I want to say? <laughs> it's not glass and it's not plastic, okay? There's other ways of putting your essential oils in there. Now you can use the root to tip. You could actually make that go farther by um, putting it in another container, like a, like maybe a two ounce spray bottle, and add um, a, your um, add distilled water, and you can still use it that way. But you don't want to over over mix. So that's where I would add some more melaleuca and lavender if I'm going to do that for my animals. Otherwise, I'm going to create. I'm going to get a one quart plastic and plastic spray bottle. And I'm going to do distilled water. There's a reason for distilled water. And I'm going to put in that, because usually that's about a 16 ounce. I'm going to use at least two of the oils, melaleuca and lavender being one of those. I might add thyme. I like thyme. And I might add a little bit of peppermint. But I would use 20 drops in a 16 ounce for my animal friends, okay, with the distilled water. I'm not gonna use the carrier oil, I'm going to use water. Now, water is a driver, so it will penetrate where it needs to go, okay? So I hope that gives you some ideas on what you can do. Um, if you are using the vegetable oil or the olive oil, of course you're gonna have greasy hair, just make sure that you, after you've uh, done whatever it is you're doing, and go wash your hair with your normal shampoo. And yes, you can still put either lavender or melaleuca in your shampoo, um, just because, right? It's not gonna hurt anything and it doesn't matter, it's going to be something helpful uh, if you didn't get all of them. And it's going to take probably more than one application because remember, every nine to 10 days, there are eggs that are laid. So you're probably not going to get them all the first time around. So keep watching and keep using whatever it is that you're using to for the battle, okay? I hope that this gives you some more information. Um, I know that this doesn't give us a whole lot of time, but it gives you a really good idea and a foundation of where you can go naturally with products that you can have at home and that don't cost you as much as those pesky big bottles of stuff at the store. You're actually gonna save yourself so many. And I always, if you are not a member with doTERRA, you can, and you want doTERRA products, become a wholesale customer and get 25% off of the retail prices so that you are saving that money. Because when it only costs me pennies versus, um, you know, dollars <laughs> somewhere else, I would rather choose the pennies. So that's what I have to offer. And since we're in the spring mode and I'm sitting down on my front porch yesterday and I'm like, really? We've had, we've been down in the teens in the low twenties at night and then really, really warm during the day. I'm sitting there and guess what I have? Flies already. I'm like, serious? <laughs> wow. Um, so next week we're going to talk about 
a product called TerraShield. What's a good bug repellent? And because it is the season, <laughs> I love that. Now, another thing I hope that you will do is do some research on the other benefits of lavender and melaleuca and some of these other essential oils because like even for melaleuca, you're not just getting an antifungal and an antibacterial. You're getting something that will help with sore throats. It helps with athlete's foot. It helps with fungus. It helps with uh, emotional balance. It helps with your cold and, during your cold and flu season. Um, it helps for dandruff. I mean, it's just the list is, is incredible. Same with lavender. It's not just a calming essential oil. So you guys have a wonderful day. And please always reach out to me if you have any questions or if you want to leave a comment. I love hearing back from everybody. And my email address is heavensent, S-E-N-T, oil, at gmail.com. So heavensent, S-E-N-T, oil, at gmail.com. And I also have a face, or actually have a website for your animal friends. And that is naturals and the number four animals. So naturalsforanimals.com. And I hope that you will go check it out. And there's some freebies in there as well. And that is my way to give you information on your animal friends and natural products and not just using essential oils. So you guys have a wonderful week. And we will see you next week. And we will talk about the Terra Shield and how to help you battle those pesky other little things that we have every single year. <laughs> and I can't believe that we're getting the flies already. So the rest are coming very shortly. <laughs> so you guys have a good one and we'll see you next week. Thanks everyone.